quiet, please. Quiet, please. Quietplease.org presents Quiet Please, which is written by and features Paul Mir. Quiet Please for tonight is called The Future of History. I'll bet you're wondering what this machine is and what it's doing in a cemetery. If you want to know about it, you'd better ask me. I built the thing. But it doesn't really matter how it works. Nobody will understand that anyway. It's enough to know that it does work. What is it? A time machine. It uses a quantum negative mass fluid, oscillating on a frequency that flips a single individual to another part of their personal timeline in a defined manner that Nobody brings... Nobody cares, Reggie. Just sounds like a jumble of sciency words. <sighs> And I suppose people care about what you have to say. Of course they do. I have the human story here. The emotional story people can relate to. And I'm the one who set the events in motion. Who's setting events in motion. <laughs> I'm just the man from 1985 who built the world's first time machine and took it 37 years into the future. Nothing interesting there. Glad we agree. Anyway... I always come out here to Union Cemetery on New Year's Day, even when it's raining like this. It's a gentle, peaceful place, an oasis of the past. Almost outside time, if you think about it. Below your feet, there's 170 years of our neighbors, from the gold rush days onward. But you're not here for the 170-year-old graves. No. I thought I'd find you here, Clifton. I know you don't approve, dear. This is my wife, Elizabeth. Just as well that she's here now, because she's really the center of this whole story. I don't want to be the center. I'd rather be a footnote. That's not your choice, dear. But shouldn't it be? Hold on. I think they're getting confused already. Let's get back to telling the story. Since I'm not interesting enough, Clifton was about to explain why he comes here on the 1st of January every year. I'm visiting a grave. My grave. He's visiting my grave. Except it's not actually here. It's just a patch of grass. But it will have been here for five years if I don't go back. It's a confusing sensation. Looking at a patch of grass and knowing you'll have been buried there for five years shortly? I didn't anticipate this when I made the machine. It's all Clifton's fault, though. None of this would have happened if he hadn't stolen it from me. I mean, if he weren't about to steal it from me. Let's try to explain this from the beginning for all these patient people. For me, the beginning was five years ago. Cliff and I were dating. It was New Year's Eve, and you came by my place for a little private celebration. Just the two of us. Elizabeth! You're here! You're really here! At last! It's real! (laughs) Cliff, is something wrong? You're acting like you haven't seen me in years. You don't know how right you are. What? What's wrong? Have you noticed I look different today? Older, more gray hair, new lines on my forehead. Look at me closely, Elizabeth. Oh, honestly, Cliff, 
you look fine. Don't worry about it. We all have days where we look older. You see this little scar on my left palm? You've never noticed it before, because it wasn't there when you saw me Tuesday. Well, I, uh, um, I must have forgotten it. What are you trying to tell me? I'm not the same man I was the last time we met. You're starting to scare me, Cliff. I've come from the future, five years in the future, to save your life. You... what? When you drive home tonight, right about two in the morning, when you're coming up out of the canyon on 193, there's an accident. Drunk driver. Your car spins and goes over the edge. They fish your body out of the river tomorrow afternoon. The worst day of my life. I've come back to make you stay tonight, so it doesn't happen. <laughs> oh, honestly, you don't have to make up crazy stories to get me to stay the night. So, so you'll stay? Promise me. Please promise me. I promise. Thank God. That's the weight of the world off my shoulders. <laughs> And it worked. None of that fate crap you hear in science fiction stories, where you can't change the past or something worse happens. I saved her life, and we lived happily ever after. No, I didn't return to the present. Why would I rob myself of those happy days by skipping over them? I stayed in the past. And when I tried the machine again months later, planning just a brief excursion, it didn't work. The fluids have to be replaced every couple of weeks. Maybe you shouldn't steal things you know nothing about. So I was stuck five years ago, but not the slightest bit bothered by that. Elizabeth and I married, and we lived happily ever after. Until now. Now something worse happens. We'll go on living happily ever after. If that means we have to shorten the ever after, so be it. We can't. It's selfish. It's the only way. Elizabeth, dear, a world without you in it does not deserve to exist. Do you see any way out of this, Reggie? Any way to make everything right? The way things were before was right, and that's the only way to fix this. It wasn't right for me, and it wasn't right for Elizabeth. I'll take it. Better to be dead than the reason nothing ever lives again. That's a bit of a dramatic way to put it. Is it? The universe will live with us. For five years. Yes. Who's to say the future is better and the past should be obliterated? Who's to say those five years aren't more deserving of having life again than whatever would have followed? Nobody's supposed to say. But now you've set yourself up as the arbiter who gets to say the future of the entire universe. Or lack thereof. <laughs> You're one to talk. You built this machine that breaks causality and controls time itself. Why did you do that if not to control the fate of the universe? Who could live with knowing he could build a time machine without actually building it? Where did you get the idea for a time machine, Mr. Iverson? Well... It was last autumn, I mean 1984. Honestly, the whole thing came to me one evening over dinner. You seem to dabble in a lot of fields, Reggie. True enough. I may be an engineer, but I like to work on electronics, do some welding, study some physics and fluid dynamics. There's ideas that come to you when you dabble in a bunch of stuff that might never occur to you when you're more narrowly focused. How about you, Prisha? I stick pretty close to theoretical physics. There's plenty of room in there to be creative, to come up with thought experiments and explore related philosophical issues. Like time travel paradoxes? Sure. Impress me. 
How would you design a time machine? Well, I just think about the physics side of it. And from a physics point of view, I know this is a minority opinion, but I think it's possible as long as you remain within your own timeline, you could switch places with another version of yourself and it wouldn't violate any physical laws. Hmm. So you could go back or ahead in your own life, but no further. What sort of materials would you need? Theoretically, you'd need a negative mass with a density that can hold and store tachyons. And some sort of translation matrix enzyme. Yeah. Uh, maybe a tetrahydroxicate precipitate. Yeah, maybe. But how would you determine what date you would travel to? The machine could adjust relative fluid mixtures to determine the distance to travel along the operator's timeline. We have biological signatures of the passage of time. Theoretically, it's almost as easy as counting tree rings. You know, I think I can actually build this thing. Great. Use it to jump ahead to when they bring us our food. We've been waiting forever. And I did build it. It took me eight months, but it was remarkably easy considering nobody had even imagined it was possible before my flash of insight. By July 85, I was ready to try it, and I set the machine for one day in the past. Mr. Iverson? But I just saw you in the other room. How did you get here? Jose, go fetch me and bring me to me. Excuse me, sir? <sighs> Never mind. I'll get me myself. I'm not there. Oh, yeah. Prisha warned me that I'd be trading places. I can't meet myself. Shame that. It'd be nice to converse with someone on my level. Odd I don't remember going a day in the future, though. I take it you got the machine working then, sir. When are you from? Tomorrow. I'm from tomorrow. I wanted a short hop to test it out. Now I need to test a change. Some small, irrelevant change. You could rearrange the plants. I'll rearrange the plants. Jose, move that piece lily to the corner and put the spider plant on the cabinet. There. You've done it, sir. Great. I'll go back to tomorrow and verify their new position. But when I got back, the peace lily was on the cabinet and the spider plant was in the corner. That threw me for a loop. I went back and tried it again. Same result. On the third trial, I stayed in yesterday for a full day. But when the moment arrived that I'd originally gone back in time, suddenly the plants reverted to their original positions. What do you mean, original positions, sir? Do you remember when I came back in time yesterday and had you move the plants? No. Is that really what you built a time machine for? It was a test. A scientific test. But somehow it's like I never went. You didn't go. I've been right here all day, Mr. Iverson. I know you haven't tried the machine yet. That's right. This time I didn't go. Huh. So whenever I relive the moment I time-traveled, I have to repeat the time-travel to retain the effects. Kind of a useless invention then, sir? If you have to get stuck in a time loop? But the two times I used the machine to jump ahead past the moment I traveled from, it should have worked. I wonder. Oh, I think I have it. Both times I jumped back to the present, I switched places with a version of myself that wasn't motivated to come back and make the same change, because it had already been done. Those versions of me would want to progress to change something else or go somewhere else, thus allowing my change to reverse. If you say so, sir. Damn me and my insatiable scientific thirst for progress for thwarting my plans. <laughs> I could have a word with you, sir. Best just to draw a line under that experiment. I've had enough of yesterday. 
I'm not going to waste my life revisiting it. It's time for a real trip. Setting it for the year 2022 now. Is that in your lifetime, Mr. Iverson? Seems so. Is it safe, sir? What if this room is different? What if there's a different building here in 2022? What if you come out inside a wall or something? Oh, yeah. I'll set it to materialize in the cemetery. That'll never change. I should be back momentarily, Jose, no matter how long I spend in the future. But won't the other you be... Hello there. Greetings. I am Reginald Iverson, the inventor of time travel. What year is it? It's Happy New Year 2022, just as you planned. I've been waiting for you. You what? Oh, I, I suppose my first trip into the future would be well known by now. Actually, there ought to be a whole reception committee. Why is it just you? I guess your fan club didn't want to get wet, Reggie. Tell me, did you learn about me in school? Is time travel commonplace these days? You're the first I've heard of it. But you were waiting for me? That's right. Because I've met you before. Five years ago to me. Right now to you and everybody else. You... Wait, what? I stole your machine, I made a certain improvement to history, and I'm about to do it again. That brings you up to date. Does everyone understand where we're at now? They have questions. So do I. There's not much time, but I'll take one of yours, dear. Isn't this a separate timeline? Because you're already saying and doing different things than the last time Mr. Iverson arrived. So, how do you know I'll be dead in this timeline? This is more up Reggie's alley. It's a matter of the conservation of matter. The law of conservation of matter, energy, to be precise. The universe doesn't surrender it easily, even with time travel. You can change who you are the second time, but there has to be only one of you at any given time. If Clifton doesn't go back, the old version of him he traded places with goes back and things play out as before. And there are no separate timelines, no alternate universe, it's just one convoluted timeline with some twists. Just where is that old version of me I switched places with, by the way? Tomorrow. If you'll let tomorrow come... There isn't going to be a tomorrow. Or anything past um, 70 seconds from now. We can't let you do this. You don't have the right. Stay back, all of you. I won't be aiming in the air next time. Oh, you wouldn't shoot me, Cliff. I don't want to. Then step away from the machine. But if, if I have to kill you to save your life, I will. If I let you stop me, you'll have been dead for five years in a minute. I can't let that happen. We can't let our happiness be erased. Clifton, the entire universe is at stake here. Every creature in the whole damn universe is going to be trapped in an endless five-year loop because you can't let go of a woman who is begging you to let her die. 30 seconds left. What can we do? Now, all together, rush him! <laughs> 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 Have you ever read The Great Gatsby? I can't help but think of F. Scott Fitzgerald's famous closing line right now. 
So, we beat on, boats against the current, borne back ceaselessly into the past. The title of tonight's Quiet Please story was The Future of History. It was written by Paul Narum, and the man who spoke to you, Clifton, was Paul Narum. And John Allen Gauntz played Reginald Iverson. Virginia Hargrove was Elizabeth. Gary Wallen played Jose. Lindsay Townsend was Precia. Now, for a word about next week, The Ghost of Willis Cooper. Next time, we'll take a little trip to San Francisco, where a group of very odd people are on a very odd journey. I call it transit. And so until next week at the same time, I am proudly yours, Ernest Chappell. Find more original audio dramas at quietplease.org slash originals.